Okay guys, this is going to be a pause and play video. What I mean by that is there are going to be some parts within this instruction that I'm going to ask you to pause the video and then do some calculator activities and then replay the video and kind of pick up where we pause. So here we go. We're going to start with this first problem. Quadratic functions g and k are shown below. Now if you get confused with this g of x and this k of x, the reason why they notate that is because they're telling you that the, we'll call this the red equation, is the g equation, and we'll say the blue equation is the k equation. That's no different than just saying f of x, or if you want to put it in kid-friendly terms, we could say y equals. So let's look at what the question is asking. For what value of c, so they're asking us, what could we plug in here for c? Will the graph of k be nine units above the graph of g? So they're saying that k is going to be nine units above the graph of g. So I'm just gonna kinda illustrate what that's gonna look like here. So it needs to be nine units above. We don't know where exactly on the graph it it's gonna be located until we start to graph this. So here we go. This is going to be the first thing that you wanna do when you're comparing graphs. I'm going to go under the y equals and we're going to type in the original equation, the g equation. And we're going to graph it. Let's do a visual inspection. Now when you're talking about quadratics and you're translating them, I like to look for the vertex here. And if you notice the vertex, if you look over here on the calculator, you can't see the vertex. So there's a couple ways of going about doing this. For me, I'm going to calculate the vertex using the second calc. It is a minimum, a number three. And so I want you to pretend like we have this parabola. I'm going to draw this right here. You have this parabola. And I'm going to draw an axis of symmetry right there. Now when I draw an axis of symmetry, I have a left side and then I have a right side. So I've split it up into two parts. And so the reason why we're doing that is the calculator is going to ask you to jump through some hoops, so to speak. It's going to ask you to get to the left of this parabola. You can see the little blinking cursor there is to the left of it. We're going to hit enter. Then it's going to say, okay, I need you to move the cursor somewhere to the right. So I can see it blinking there. I'm going to hit enter. And then the last step, it's going to ask you to take a guess where you think the vertex is. I'm going to say, oh, I think it's right here. I'm going to hit enter. So there, it automatically tells you that the vertex is at 0, negative 12. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this not the color I wanted, but we'll go with that. So we'll go right here. And so you'll see that this is negative 12 right down here. And that is the red equation. So we're going to do something like this. We're going to go, right? Now, the question, going back to the question, the question is asking, what can we plug in here for the yellow part, C, to get the red equation nine units up to make the k equation. Well, if I'm at negative 12 and I count nine units up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, where would we be at? Well, let's count that. Negative 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. It looks like it would be at negative three right here. So this would be negative three. So we're making the assumption that our new equation looks like this. But let's do a visual inspection here. So we're going to take y equals and we're going to type in the new equation. So I encourage you guys at this point to pause the video, type in the blue equation, and then let's look at the two here. So here we go. We're going to type in 5x squared minus 3. But check this out. I want you to scroll all the way to the left and I want you to hit enter. What we've done is We've now created a bold line. You can see that the line is a little darker. So when I hit graph, you will see that the new graph is bolder. And we're gonna do that in this exercise so that way you can see the difference between the original graph and the new graph. And you can see that it moved up. And it's right here, you can see that it's at one, two, it's at negative three. So the value of C, negative three. Quadratics need to be in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. So that's important. So now what we're going to do 
is, if they give us this equation here, can we fill out the parts for A, B, and C? A, B, and C are the coefficients. That's just a fancy way of saying the numbers here. So let's look at this. A is three. B, use a different color, is negative two. You have to use the sign in front of the number. And then our last one here, let's go with purple. C is negative seven. All right, that was pretty easy. So let's look at the different pieces of information we have here. Letter A, what coefficient or what number changes to make the parabola either wider, wider would be like this, or narrower could be like this. Now it could go up or down, but we're just gonna assume that it's up. So what number, can we change the three, can we change the negative two, or could we change the negative seven? Well, we already said that it is not C. Because on question one, we said if you change the letter C, if you remember, we changed it from negative 12 to negative three, what that does is it shifts the graph up or down. So now it's either A or B. So this is what I'd like you to do. Let's take our calculator. We're gonna clear some stuff out here. And let's type in our original equation. This is the original equation right here. So let's do that, three x squared minus two x minus seven. Okay, I want you to pause the video and right before you pause the video here, I would like you to take the negative two and let's change the negative two to positive two and see if the graph got wider or narrower compared to the original. Now, whenever you do that, don't forget to come over here and make this line bolder so we can see the difference. All right. 3x squared. This time we're going to change it to, let's change it to positive 2x minus 7. Let's see if the graph got wider or narrower. There's the original. So what happened? What can you visually see happened from the original to the new? Yeah, it looks like it kind of went to the left and down a little bit, but it looks like the width did not change. So, okay. We know that it's not changing B, so let's change A this time. Let's change A. Let's, why don't we take this time, instead of using the number three, pick a random number. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use six. Six X squared minus two X minus seven. I'm going to bold this parabola so I can see the difference. Here we go, there is the original. Here is the new one. Ah, you can see that the bolder parabola actually ended up getting more narrow. So we know that if you change A to make it either bigger or smaller in size, then it will either make it wider or more narrow. How can you letter C Oh, let's look at letter B, I'm sorry. What coefficient changes to shift either up or down? We already answered that. That's the letter C from question one. And then here's part C. How can you determine if the parabola opens up? So how do we know if it opens up or if it opens down? Most of you are gonna say, well, you just graph it and look, right? Yeah, that's right. But what if I wanted to look just at this equation right here and go, yes, I know it opens up or down. Well, we know if you change B, it didn't do anything, so we know it's not B. We know it's not C because that moves it up or down. So what have we not done with A? Well, here in this example, we just increased the number, but we have not changed the sign in front of A. So let's do that. Come back over here. We have our original, we're gonna clear this out bold the line and let's make that a negative 3x squared minus 2x minus 7. Here comes the original. Here comes the new one. Ah, so there it is. So if it opens up, A is positive. If it opens down, A is negative. The idea behind this activity is to go through and prove a hypothesis with the calculator. 
Don't just make an assumption. That's what the test wants you to do. They want you to make an assumption and you go quickly through it, but use the calculator. If they give you an equation and they're talking about something happening to the graph, well, compare that what's happening to the original using the calculator here. All right, let's look at our last problem here. This is going to be our application problem. The graph of y equals 3x squared minus 2 is shown below. This is what we have. 3x squared minus 2. This is very wordy, but we're going to dissect this and we're going to use the different parts, or I could say that the proofs that we've created from those two examples and see if we can answer this here. If the coefficient, that's a fancy way of saying, if the number that's in front of x squared, okay, so if this number here in front of x squared is changed, that means it's going to change. It's going to be something different from 3. So let's see what they mean by change. Change from 3 to another, to another positive number. It has to be another positive number. I'm going to pick, I'm just going to go ahead and pick 6x squared. And we'll finish with minus 2. It's changed to another positive number to create a new function. So we have a new function. We'll call this the green function. That's the new one. How will the graph of the new function compare with the graph of the original? So in other words, how will this green graph compare to the blue graph? Okay, let's go through and graph them. Start with the blue one, 3x squared minus 2. That is my original. Here is the new one, but before we start with the new one, bold it, 6x squared minus 2. Graph it. Here's the original. Here's the new one. And you can already see that this green one is more narrow or narrower. I'm not sure what the verbiage is on that. I'm just going to say more narrow. Now we are going to take that information and see if we can start eliminating some answer choices. The x-intercepts of the new graph will be the same as the x-intercepts of the original. Let's prove that. Let's see if that's true or false. Proving it with the calculator. I'm going to zoom in right here. So zoom in. Number two. The blinking cursor is right there. So we're going to go ahead and say enter or hit enter. And let's see if the x-intercepts are the same. Are they the same? No. And think about it. If it gets narrower, that means it's pulling the parabola closer inward, which means it's going to also affect where it crosses the x-axis. So, goodbye letter A. Look at letter B. The vertex. Remember the vertex? We're talking about this point right here. The vertex of the new graph will be different from the vertex of the original. Well, you can look right here, people. Those vertices are the same. Goodbye. Letter C, the new graph will be wider or narrower than the original graph. We said it was narrower, so we're going to put a question mark because I think that's the answer, but I want to make sure. The new graph will open in the opposite direction. Well, that means it would have to open like this somehow, and it did not. So by using the calculator, we were able to prove that the answer is C. Go through, dissect the problem, use that calculator to compare the original blue to the green, and you'll be successful on these quadratics. Yeehaw, guys.